Let's take a look at another example. This time with currency. As we start adding currency, we can change the type of currency that we're talking about, whether it's dollars or euros. The decimals, by default, probably two. Whether we're going to add the thousand sign, accounting style, and how we're going to display negative numbers. Now there's different ways to display negative numbers, either with the negative, um, in the red, parentheses, or both of those. This is, de this is definitely a ledger or accounting style, the, the red, and then parentheses around it is uh, another type of accounting, of accounting format for showing negative numbers. I'm going to click accounting style. Now as we type a number, all I'm going to do is just type the number, no parentheses, periods, anything, 154, and I'm going to click enter. You can see how now it's, like I said with the accounting style, we have now the, uh, the currency symbol over here on the left, and then the number here on the right. It's automatically added a decimal point, and then two, two zeros at the end to make it uniform. Once again, I'm going to carry this over. We're going to change the information here. I can completely delete the euro sign. It doesn't matter. That's going to come back because no matter what, it's going to add that into our formatting. Now I'm going to add way too many decimal points here, and we're going to see what happens. You can see how it automatically rounds it to the next appropriate decimal to have two decimals there. And it also added our euro sign. So now you can see how this can be really helpful. For example, say we've got some calculation going on. Our calculation might not incorporate the appropriate number of decimal points, and it might not incorporate um, a currency symbol, such as a euro sign or as a dollar sign. And so all we have to do is it imports the raw number in here, whether it's 15, anything else, and then this gets inputted in here. Likewise, even if it's a negative number, Say we get some crazy scientific number, you can see how it automatically shows me the appropriate thing that I've chosen. Now I'm going to let you look at a lot of these by yourself. Another great example here is percentage. I'm going to come here and work on percentage. Percentages, when we get in calculations, they're often in decimals. For example, 0.75 is 75%. So if we were to calculate something and we get a result of 0.75, we might want to demonstrate, we might want to show that in our table at 75% and not 0.75. And that's the beauty of this. We choose our percentage, zero decimals, and I'm now going to type 0.75 to indicate the what I would get from a calculation. You can see how a number automatically formats that to 75%, so it looks nice and pretty inside this table. Now you can see how this can carry on. It goes even further and further. Most of these I'm going to have you uh, play with on your play with by yourself because otherwise it's going to take way too much time to go through each of these individually. Percentage and, and amounts are the most popular ones. We also have dates and you can choose obviously different date formats that you want. Now numbers are automatically going to determine the dates that you have and change it to the format that you want. I'll show you this real quick. We're going to look on uh, date and time, and I'm going to change it to this format here, January 5th, 2009. Now I'm going to simply type in a date here, 10 slash 22 slash 2008, and click enter. You can see now that numbers has automatically changed that to October 22nd, 2008. It's added a default time because I had time selected. If I don't want to add time, I just need to make sure I don't. I have no time. Otherwise, I'll have to add time. And once again, it's on, automatically going to determine the time based on what I input. That's the power behind self-formatting. This can continue on durations, fractions, numeric system, scientific numbers, and then we can even have other options, interactive options like check boxes, steppers, sliders, and pop-up menus. This is some of this. A lot of these features are new in side of numbers 09. For example, a pop-up menu. As I was showing you earlier with categories, we can now choose various categories here. I double click. As I input my categories here, I can add new ones by clicking plus. And then get rid of ones by clicking minus. 
And now I've selected my pop-up menu. And now when I come to this item here, I have a pop-up menu of three different choices. And I can click them and choose the appropriate choice. So these are some other options that we might have. We also can have a slider. This is useful if you want someone to be able to adjust something easily. So they could rate something or all series of things. Take the slider and it gives out a number. You can choose minimum and maximum numbers and also what it increments by. You could have it increment in fives. One to a hundred in fives. And so there's all sorts of options here that people can add. And you can see tons of different uses for this. And it's all customizable in here. Some other little options we have is a stepper and checkbox. So stepper would be something that someone can add increments by clicking these up and down arrows. Once again, just like the slider, we can choose increments, minimums, and maximums. And then a checkbox. So this is where this is either a yes, no. It's either checked or it's unchecked. And you could have this over here for, once again, tons of different uses. And you could turn off calculations based on whether something's checked or not. And so there's tons of different uses for all these different cell formats. In addition, we can have conditional formats. Conditional formats are shown here. All we have to do is select what we want to conditionally format, click Show Rules, and now we can add rules. So here we can choose a, a format. A conditional format, by the way, is anything. This is where, based on rules, this changes the outcome of the format. So, for example, you could have if something was equal to 100, then it would become red. Here we have a plus and minus. Let's add another rule. If something is greater than 100, it's going to be blue. And add one more. And if it's less, then it's going to be green. So here you can see save all of those. We've now added a conditional rule in all these cells here that the box, the cell is going to change color based on the the number. Oh, I forgot to add 100 there. So if it's less than 100, it's going to be green. So so here we go. I'm going to I'm going to now exit this. You can see now this turns green cuz um the the number in here is all the numbers in here which is by default 0 or nothing is less than 100. So I'm going to add a number here, and it's going to be 125, 100, 25. And you can see that now these have changed format based on the number that's in there. If it's over 100, it's been blue. If it's 100, it's red. And if it's less than 100, it's green. Once again, tons of uses are available for this, so once you understand how to use it. You can also change all sorts of formatting in within the cell here. You can also add all sorts of formatting here in the cell. And by clicking this, you can add um, and by clicking this you can add formulas. So here we can type in our formula. And there we go. Remember to add and subtract rules is by clicking this plus and minus. And there's tons of different things that we can use. For example, if it's a text, you could have it search for certain words. Certain words change colors. Certain words are bolded. Certain dates. All sorts of options are available if something falls between a range, if it's less than or equal to, and all sorts of different things to create rules and even advanced rules by compiling these higher and higher with more rules. You can create very complex conditional formats here. So there you go. We now talked about formatting, cell formatting, and also cell borders in this. The next video is going to talk about styles and how to create your own styles in numbers.